Hello, and thank you for watching this video on how to deploy your .NET application to Amazon Elastic Container Service, Amazon ECS, with AWS Copilot. I am Ignacio Fuentes, a Solutions Architect here at AWS. Before we get started, let's begin by talking about ECS and how Copilot can simplify deploying applications to it. Amazon ECS is a container management service that makes it easy to run, stop, and manage containers in a cluster. With ECS, your containers are defined in a task definition, which you use to run individual tasks or as a service. ECS gives you many architectural options to fine tune exactly how you want the architecture of your workloads to operate. You can run your tasks and services on a serverless infrastructure that is managed by AWS Fargate, or for more control over your infrastructure, you can run your tasks and services on a cluster of Amazon EC2 instances that you manage. This model is great and is serving thousands of customers today. But for some customers that want less focus on infrastructure, but rather would prefer a more app-focused approach to workload deployment and management, AWS Copilot is a great choice. AWS Copilot is a command line tool that makes it easier for you to deploy your applications on Amazon ECS. The idea behind Copilot is that when thinking about creating a new container space application, you want to spend time focusing on the concepts and constructs that are specific to your application and not about infrastructure concepts like VPCs, load balancers, internet gateways, CI-CD pipelines, databases, storage, etc. Copilot handles all these underlying details for you. You just provide your container and then let Copilot handle high availability deployments and load balancer creation and configuration. You can even have Copilot create a deployment pipeline that will automatically redeploy the latest version of your application every time you push a new commit to your code repository. With Copilot, you can rapidly go from idea to implementation with the confidence that the infrastructure you have deployed has production-ready configuration. With that, Let's go ahead and take a look at the steps to deploy a brand new ASP.NET Core application to ECS with AWS Copilot. I will first use the terminal to create the folder for my application. I will navigate to that folder and initialize the application with the .NET CLI. Today, I will be creating an ASP.NET MVC application so I will use the .NET new MVC command and pass the RRC parameter for Razor Runtime Compilation in Debugging and no HTTPS. I don't need HTTPS as part of my .NET service as HTTPS and TLS termination will happen at the load balancer level. With this in place, let's open up Visual Studio Code and take a look at our application code. I am using Visual Studio Code and .NET 5, but you can use Visual Studio and other versions of .NET. As we can see, this is a typical ASP.NET MVC application. For demonstration purposes, I will make a couple of UI changes to it and run it locally. Now that I'm ready to deploy my application, I need to containerize it using Docker by creating a Docker file. VS Code has built-in support for Docker file generation, so I will make use of that. As mentioned before, I will choose port 80 only, as the TLS termination will happen at the load balancer level. Now, we are ready to deploy our application with AWS Copilot. To install the Copilot CLI, you can run the brew install aws slash tab slash copilot dash CLI command. I already have Copilot installed, so I will go ahead and start using it to deploy my application to ECS. 
In order to deploy my application, the first command I will run is a copilot command. This command will display a summary of all the available operations you can perform with the Copilot CLI. We will create an application by making use of the Copilot app init command and passing the name of our app and the domain we want to use. The domain parameter is optional. I will be using it to deploy my services to my domain hosted in Amazon Route 53. Now, we will use the copilot init command. Copilot will ask a few questions about our containerized application before it proceeds to deploy the application to ECS. We will select load balancer service as we want this application to be accessible over the internet via a load balancer. But you could also choose backend service for internal services only available to other containers within your application or schedule jobs for operations that need to be executed periodically. We will provide a name for our load balancer. I will use SVC1. This will also be the DNS subdomain assigned to our service. Copilot will ask for the path of our Docker file. In this case, it's at the root folder of my ASP.NET application. Copilot will go ahead and create the necessary infrastructure for our application. We will respond yes to deploying a test environment. Copilot will then create the required networking stack, IAM roles, build our Docker image, push it to Amazon ECR, and deploy our service. After this process is finished, we now have an accessible service we can get to. We can go to our AWS console and verify that Copilot has created an ECS cluster for us, created a task definition, and deployed one instance of the task via Fargate to our cluster. We can also deploy a new production environment separate from our test environment. We can do this by running the Copilot env init command. We will pass it production as its name. As part of this production environment, we can make some configuration changes that will only be applicable to this new environment. For example, we can change the desired number of running tasks, as well as the size of the CPU and the amount of memory allocated to each task. We can do this in our manifest.yaml file that Copilot automatically added to our application. With this in place, we can now run the Copilot service deploy command to deploy our service to the production environment with this new configuration. We can go to our AWS console once more and verify that Copilot has created a new production ECS cluster for us, created a task definition, and deployed two instances of the task as configured. We can also see that the task definition is using our set CPU and memory configurations that we passed to our manifest file. As you can see, it's very easy to get started with Copilot. And in today's example, I showed you how to deploy an ASP.NET 5 application to ECS and Fargate with Copilot. But this is really just the beginning. Copilot also supports auto-provisioning CI-CD pipelines, streamlines the creation of DynamoDB and S3 resources, and has support for add-ons to extend its functionality to many other AWS services that your application might need. So head on over to Copilot CLI's page on GitHub and get started with AWS Copilot today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. Thank you for watching.